Wendy's with us in studio today, and we're going to be talking about a couple of different issues, including a, a brief touch on um, the tariff changes around imported clothing. Uh, we'll talk about the latest product recall affecting Checkers Hummus, and then we're going to circle back on two previous stories we've covered uh, to give you some feedback on recent developments. Uh, so, if, again, if you want to join the conversation or ask a question, pop through a WhatsApp to 0725671567, and you're also welcome to give us a call on 021-446. 0567. Welcome back, Wendy. Thanks, Pippa. I have to confess, uh, the story we're starting with today had me running straight to my fridge when I heard about it because it's a product that I buy regularly. It's a Czechos hummus that's affected by this recall. Me too. My <laughs> son is vegan and um, shout out for Czechos. According to him, it's one person. He's tried them all and he this is his favorite. So I buy it often, but uh, not this time. Not this time. Yeah. So uh, I also, for once, I opened the fridge and went, no, I, I haven't got it this week because I made my own hummus last weekend. So we were still ah. eating that. But tell us what happened. Okay, so yesterday the ShopRite group announced the voluntary recall. And that's that's their way of saying this wasn't imposed on them by the National Consumer Commission. This is something that they chose to do themselves, which the the Nash, uh, the Consumer Protection Act does require them to do. Okay. Um, so they they announced the voluntary recall of their own hummus range, hummus range, which is sold in Chickas as well as some OK Food stores both obviously part of the ShopRite group. So that's all the, the range, both the 300, the larger 300 gram tub and the 125 gram tubs of the fresh deli hummus and all its variants. So that's the reduced fat one, the za'atar hummus, hummus, the red pepper hummus and the caramelized onion one. Mm, yum. And here's the important dates between the 10th of September and um, the 8th of October. Those are the sell by dates. So anything with the sell-by date from the 10th of September to the 8th of October is affected, um, all what? those variants. Okay, so what's the reason for the recall? Right, so during routine quality testing, so it's always good to know that it's a way of them saying these things don't just get put out without any checks and balances. They yep. do routine quality batch testings. Uh, microbiological contamination was found in three batches of their own brand uh, hummus. Yesterday, so the recall is what they call a precautionary measure, and in the meantime, all production uh, at the supply of this hummus, the whole range, has been halted. Presumably, while they investigate the source of of the contamination. Yes. So you okay. Keep on producing it when you don't know where it's coming where it's from. Where's what's going wrong? Okay. Yeah. So in the meantime, we either have to buy somewhere else or make our own in the interim. But more importantly, what if you'd already bought from this affected batch? What okay. do you do? So as with most or all recalls, you don't eat them. Yeah. If you if you've, uh, you know if you started eating it, don't eat anymore. Return it to your nearest checkers or OK Food, so it doesn't have to be the one you bought it from. Um, for a full refund, you don't need proof of purchase, and you may also return to op- return opened product. They just want to get it out of the market, out, of, the out of people's homes, out of the system. Yes. Okay. So the fact that it's their own range, their own daily brand, obviously, it's obvious it was bought at a checker store somewhere. So you don't even yes, have to have a step to prove it. That makes it a bit easier. Yes, so yes. you take it in, whether you've started eating it or whether it's still sealed in your fridge, it doesn't matter. Take it in to the closest store that's convenient for you. And again, they're and looking for those sell by dates of between the tenth of September. September and the 8th of October. So that's current current batches. Okay, so those are the relevant dates and it's any part of that hummus range um, uh, that, that is affected within those dates. Now, the nice thing here is we immediately have proof that they are acting on that promise that we will take it back and refund you because we got an email this morning uh, to this point. Yes, Dan from Hermanus, thanks so much for this lovely feedback. He says, I ordered the hummus on the 6060, and I think many of our listeners may have. Mm-hmm. And when I read about the recall, I wasn't sure if I now had to go to the shop or if I could just dispose of it at home. I messaged 6060 with my order number and the date of order, and they were very kind, saying that they will credit my card and I can dispose of it at home. This was a great relief as I'm not able to get to the shop soon that's really good customer so service. They, yeah. they should have actually yeah. put that in their release as well knowing how big 60 60 is, is yeah but, but good to know that for those who bought it that way and i'm sure dan Probably isn't not. alone and they made that call um they got you know a super easy stay at home resolution to the issue so okay i, I would suggest maybe just take a photograph um yes as proof of the that it is the within the of range course, the best but they'll be able to that. see it on there they want to see that your they can your also see order it on their number system. they can yeah. see what, exactly what you bought and when okay yeah. dane thanks for that feedback it's very helpful to know um about this yeah caroline messaging to say my heart sinks when i hear about these recalls the sheer waste and the landfill implications are heartbreaking i know it's necessary for public health but the food waste and the plastic waste footprint is astounding i agree that's such 
such a good point, Caroline. It's all that packaging that gets turfed as well. The packaging, the product, and and chances are that, you know… We, well, we don't know in this case how, yeah. how widespread it is, but if there's even a minuscule chance, manufacturers just cannot take the risk. Take the of risk, and, I, and I'm kind of, you know, having covered the listeriosis thing very intensively, um, that's the worst we ever had. But there've yeah. been others. They, if they've seen to know about this and not do this kind of a recall, they, you know, integrity, the, the trust you factor is yeah. just gone, and so they have to. But I hear you, and that was also a thought that I had. Oh. What a tremendous story. It is such waste. a waste. And, uh, you know, the food the food loss as well as the plastic packaging issue yes, that then goes indeed. into landfill. I take your point, Caroline. Thank you. Okay, so that's the latest. I'm just going to emphasize once more what products are affected. We're talking here about the Checkers' own range of fresh daily hummus, so not any other branded variation. Like if you bought the Mediterranean group hummus at no, Checkers, it's not those. that. It's Checkers' own daily brand hummus, all of the variations, all of the sizes of tubs, if the sell-by date was between 10 September and 8 October. If it's before then, it's not a pro- concern. Um, if it's anybody else's hummus variation, that's also fine, even if you bought it at Checkers. It's only their own house brand range that is affected by this and, uh, recall. And if you're not able to buy it at the moment, that's why. That's why. Okay. So learn to make your own. It's not too hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next up, we want to circle back to a case we covered a couple of months ago, which has had a lovely, happy ending we want to report back on. Yes. So um, I, I'm sure listeners will remember the story of Patrick and Andrew, not their real names. The married couple whose world was turned completely on its head when Andrew developed signs of cognitive dysfunction and then suffered a major brain bleed, which led him severely compromised. His practice as a dentist was impacted and um, they... They had a disability policy, well, um, Andrew did, um, but because of his forgetfulness, he missed a, a premium deadline, and it was an ultimate deadline because he was already late, and he was given yeah. this, and he had spoken about paying for it. But it, on that crucial day, he had an incident, a cognitive one, left his practice early um, and just completely forgot. And as a result, the 1.8 million rand disability benefit wasn't paid because the policy was deemed to be lapsed for non-payment. And so Andrew was desperate because you know a lot of money was required for his care um so we took up the case pointing out to momentum that the reason that andrew failed to make that payment was because it was just those few days before his collapse and he was already not in a good uh, mental state um and momentum came back i didn't hold out much hope to be honest momentum came back and said that andrew's broker had failed to share those very important extenuating circumstances with them um, and had they known, the outcome would, may well have been different. And so as a gesture of goodwill, they reinstated the policy, backdated it um, with the missing premiums waived. So they didn't yeah. have to make those up. Um, and then they said, look, this is not a done deal, but we will then be in a position to um, – he will be in a position to reinstate the claim and that they will then consider Assess it. Assess it on its merits. And yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, so that's, that's where, where we, we were when we left it yes. last time. But Wendy, you, you got a lovely update this past week. I did um, from um, – Patrick, and um, I thought we've, we'd let if we've got him on the line, it would we be lovely to hear from us, him yeah. directly. Patrick, it's lovely to have you back with us again. Uh, can you tell us what's happened since we last spoke? Good afternoon. Hi, hi, hi ladies. Uh, thanks very much. Um, yeah, uh, it's just been it's been a while, um, and it's been it's been uphill sometimes, but uh, it was actually one of the greatest telephone calls or, or messages I could send to Wendy to say that Momentum has now um, agreed to pay out. Oh, That's not goodness. just the process of uh, going through the, the, the claims. Um, we struggled a bit with, with uh, uh, getting um, the psychiatrist and psychologist on this side. And Momentum was actually very good in, in even appointing a, a psychiatrist um, to do an evaluation, which was done about two weeks ago. Uh, I was struggling to get an appointment with, with our one. I, I had to wait for two and a half months. That yeah. was the first appointment. Oh, the first get. I've heard of this. That's wonderful. So they got their yeah. own psychiatrist to do the evaluation for you. Well, okay. They, they they appointed one. First of all, they said to me, would I, I like the, our broker to be involved with it? And I said, absolutely not. And then they gave me the, they gave me a, um, a choice. They said, you know, would you like a, a man or a lady? And I said, you know, I'd, I'd like to have a, a, a lady. 
Um, and, uh, and then they appointed uh, a lady called Matilda van Burek, and um, who's who's one of their senior consultants, and she's been very nice. And and uh, we met a couple of times, they even skyped from New Zealand um, the first time, and then met in person. And then they arranged the the meeting with the psychiatrist, and it was within a week. Um, we got an appointment with the psychiatrist, and within a week, we got our answer back from the psychiatrist and from Momentum. So the good news is that they would be paying out. Um, so so we're very pleased. We're very pleased with, with, uh, with all your help. Uh, without you guys, we couldn't have done it. Wonderful. Patrick, we're Thank so you. thrilled that it's had this, this, this final ending. Uh, may I ask, how is Andrew doing? He's... Uh, he's... Uh, he's uh, He's 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 okay. He has you know up and down days, and yeah. uh, I, I I just think you know because we haven't been on a medical aid now, so um, he actually needs to go back for speech therapy, yeah. uh, occupational therapy, just to to get all those cognitive uh, skills um, working the whole time. Um, but I think it's something that you that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life is is to, is to to keep that up. Yeah. But the good news is you now have that, that financial that relief. you needed to, mm. to make that all possible. So, Patrick, I'm so glad that it's it's finally got to this outcome. And it's really great to hear that positive feedback about how Momentum have treated you since Wendy stepped in and, and since they understood properly. And and, the and they never told me this as sort of, you know, just to let you know, we've done blowing their own trumpet. I, I wouldn't that. have known if, yeah. if um, Patrick hadn't told us. So, so Patrick, thanks yeah. so much for joining us to, to update the audience uh, on the story. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people have been wondering what, what became of you both. Look, so that's great look, news. It, 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 it hasn't really ended. Um, uh, the, the, there's a whole process now that has to be followed um, which goes to the high court and even to uh, the master. Um, obviously, having to do a, 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 a getting someone to be a curator to get a, a curator appointed, uh, which hopefully we, we have, well we have to do that through the master or through the high court. So at least it's 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 a step further. So um, we know it's going to happen. Good luck Patrick, with that. thank you so much and good luck. Yeah, uh, these processes are <laughs> burdensome Tedious. at the best of times. But um, I'm so pleased to hear that that momentum has agreed to pay out the claim. That's the very good news we were hoping for. And best wishes to both you and Andrew. Wendy, thanks for stepping in to make such a huge difference in this particular oh, case. It's really gratifying. And my lesson was I could easily not have because I looked at that and I thought oh, this is such a so little hope that anything could change here. So it was a lesson to me not to make those sort of assumptions and yeah. to push forward even if I think that. But, um, you know, I'm giving someone false hope or in even yeah. suggesting that there might be a different outcome. Well done, everybody. Thank you. And well done, Momentum. It's very good to hear that that sort of compassion kicked in And the as follow well. through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, the next one is, I was going to say something new, but it's really only newish because we've known for quite some time, Wendy, that government was going to clamp down on the online retailers like Shane or Temu that South African buyers are buying from and who were using loopholes to avoid customs duties in some cases. We knew those changes were coming. They have now taken effect. Yeah. So, yeah, um, up till now, many online retailers such as Shen and Timu have been able to use the de minimis rule according to Weber Wenzel attorneys, which means that imports of 500 rand or less have been subject to a standard customs duty of 20% on the value of the goods without VAT. And this is compared to local retailers who pay up to 45% customs duties and more than double yeah. is in, in many cases. And on top of that, they pay 15% import VAT. So you can see the level, the playing field is not level. And it's why it would, part of the reason why the Chinese imports seem so much cheaper because the locals have to include in their retail price their costs of all that the tax the, the duty and the tax that um we don't pay when we order when we order directly and we order in um <laughs> huge volumes so according to SARS in June of 2024 just a couple of months ago collectively we as South Africans imported about 4.2 million rands of goods from various Chinese retailers um, and we so we are buying significantly significantly more imported products than locally procured 
clothing. So yeah. a lot of people are like, yeah, but you you know it's so much cheaper and we we price sensitive and blah 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 blah. And, but you know, Weber Wenzel went into great detail um, that we don't have time to share now. But it's sort of underlining the point that this has a very very big negative uh, knock on impact. knock on effect yeah. in terms of employment figures in terms of you know sustaining these industries and it's it's really we we really i think the bottom line is, is look beyond your look beyond the price look beyond look to see the bigger picture here and what your purchase decisions and it's not just you you're part of that 4.2 million rands worth of spend on average in one month, month. and yeah. I, I reckon it's going to ramp up now as people start looking to buy christmas gifts oh, um yes. so it's it's yeah so so as of 1 September, it's in place. It's now charged the same customs duties on imports yeah. as... VAT is added at a, at a current 20% flat rate. Okay. Um, it's, sorry, VAT is added to the current 20% flat rate of uh, customs duty as a temporary measure. And this was the first time I'd read this. By the 1st of November this year, the 20% flat rate will be restructured to align with World Customs Organization categories. So there are more changes to come. This thing's going to be tweaked a bit and we okay. will bring you those details closer to the time. As and when they happen. Okay, yeah. but just to alert you, if you are shopping using these platforms, be aware of the fact that um, um, this is now in effect. In effect, So don't get a surprise uh, uh, when you hit with those new tariffs. A couple of immediate responses. Kenton has written back to say the reason when he says there's, yes. um, that he, such great products. He says, we've bought mostly clothing and shoes. The range of clothing is incredible and there is nothing similar available in this country is Kenton's point. Uh, immediately though, Greg writing in to say anyone arrogantly buying from Temu doesn't realize the ramifications for our economy. People need to be educated. Uh, so two very diverse opinions. One and saying always it's, a, will it's be. Yeah, a good shopping experience. The other pointing out, as you've pointed out already, Wendy, the reason these tariffs have been introduced as they are, are to regulate the environment and stop that terrible knock-on impact on the local economy and, and jobs I mean, market. The, we've got such shocking unemployment figures. Yeah. It's it's The government would be remiss if they weren't taking these steps. And every, every I mean, First world countries, they all have these kind of protections for their own industries in place. Uh, for now, though, let's circle back to a story okay. we covered a while ago. Um, Wendy, let me just try and summarize quickly. For We don't yes. want to revisit the whole long no. story, but listeners might recall first a phone call and then a follow-up investigation for our listener, Abdurrahman Ali, who contacted us to say, hey, my cell phone bill almost doubled. Uh, and he came to the end of his contract and allowed it to simply roll over onto a month-to-month -month basis, expecting that the fee would stay, stay the, the same. same. But MTM... Um, told him the original amount he was paying, which was 430 rand a month, had been a special deal. And that deal came to an end when the contract ended. And going forward, he'd have to pay 1,000 rand for the self-same yeah, package, so more. more than double. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, Wendy, you pushed back, you queried, why had he not been informed about the change in fee? Because legally, in terms of the Consumer Protection Act, he should have received SMSs to let him know. He was adamant Between that he Between 40 and 80 yeah, days before the end yeah. of the contract. And he, he was adamant he had never seen any yeah. such M, uh, message. You took it to MTN. They said, but we did send them. Yes. Won't you remind us okay. what it was that went wrong? I think this is important because I th I'm pretty sure it affects a lot of people. So... It turned out that MTN had sent the, those messages before the contract expired, but to his wife's prepaid number. It turned out he took out that number as his first contract with um, MTN 11 years ago or so. It's always been prepaid. She's always used it. He said he's never listed it when he's applied for his contracts because yeah. it's got nothing to do with him. him. It's his wife's number. But yeah. obviously on his account, it must be there. He wasn't aware of it. Um, and so those are the messages had gone to his wife. In, and I looked at them. They're in the, in a stream of marketing messages. So easy to miss. You know, get this deal, this package, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I pushed back to say, well, why don't you use um, – why don't you use – Abdurrahman's uh, number that that's associated with the contract because yeah. they sent him in December, as many companies do, an SMS saying we'll be debiting your your um, subscription fee early in December. That you know get their money hands on your money before December happens. And he said, so how come I got that then? They didn't send it to my wife saying they wanted yeah. me to know it. And MTN came back and said, well, there's the uh, we send service messages to the primary. It was very complicated, but I still say they should be sending it to both. I said, are you going to 
uh, refund uh, him. Abdurrahman yeah. said this number's never appeared on his current contract. That's not his number. They know it's not because otherwise they would have used it when they sent him the, the debit order so message. There's quite a yeah. bit of you know question marks about the motives of that. Anyway, MTN says no. Um, that's it was re- listed. It's we're not. It's not up to us to point out the fact that this was his uh, primary number on his on his account. And people must check, and we're not. We could have known it was answer. his wife's number. No, yeah. and don't forget his number was a prepaid number, but they don't. That doesn't factor into it. Uh, so, it was all a very curious case for me. But the bottom line is, check with if you've got a contract, and some of us, myself included, you have your children on there, you have your spouse on there, in mm-hmm. some cases, whatever, and they're all these different numbers. Find out on your account, your account, I'm not talking about each contract, find out what the primary number on your account is and make sure it's your number if that's what you want it to be. Yeah. So there's no excuse for important messages, be they service message, or I forget how they, what they, value added messages, <laughs> whatever they are. But my thing is, I still think, you know, if MTN sent the message about the early debit and Abdurrahman got it on his number that is on his current contract. They knew how to reach it. They yeah. should have seen that important one about the fact that his uh, subscription fee was going to more than double if he didn't do anything about it, if he didn't cancel, if he didn't um, upgrade or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think there was room for improvement there, to put it very discreetly. Yeah. Um, and, and the rest of us can take a lesson from that. Proactively go and check. What is the primary number that is mm. captured against your, your name in their books, so, basically? So okay. that they can't send important information about your contract and what's going to happen when it moves into month to month if you choose not to cancel or upgrade. Uh, they can't send it to some other number that might be your child's or your wife's or you don't ever use, but somehow it's there linked on your contract. They are gra- regarded as your primary number. Get that get that changed. Check okay. It out. Wendy, while we're talking MTN, uh, a question in from Talia, which I, I'd like you to respond to. Um, and she says, my dad passed away a month mm-hmm. and a half ago. I'm very sorry for your loss, Talia. But this is interesting. She says, most bureaucratic things have been relatively smooth. But when I called MTN to cancel his account, they told me they would charge me for the rest of the contract. And her question is, is that legal? It's infuriating and it seems hostile to me. My dad had been an MTN customer for many, many years. There are two numbers on the account, his and my mom's. They offered to move both numbers onto prepaid, but we would have had to pay out the remaining contract, even if we cancelled both numbers and lost my mom's access to her number that she's had many years. We would still be charged. It feels unconscionable to me, says Talia. Your response? It's a common complaint that I get, um, and I think it's it's natural to think that somebody's contracts die with them, but that's not the case. So either the family becomes liable or the estate, um, and and it is understandable if you think about it. If, if there's a handset involved, if there's hardware. If it's a SIM only contract, I would say yes. Technically, that contract is valid and needs to be honoured in whatever way after the person dies but i would say you know that they should give a 50 percent discount or there they won't be there won't be a loss there's no hardware um and if it's less than six months to go i would say you know please just as a goodwill gesture and it would make the go. family feel yeah. so great and want to continue to support the company right yeah. but when there's a phone um that makes it more tricky because the the I mean, it wasn't, I'm trying to say this in a sensitive way, not the company's fault that the person passed away. And there, was a, there was an obligation, there was a commitment made, there was hardware, um, a valuable, expensive phone in most cases given over, um, in which case they normally give two options. You pay the cancellation penalty, keep the phone, which mm-hmm. is, can be quite high if the contract was fairly new, or they claim from the estate. Um, so that's how it works, but I, I, so I don't know if this was a with a phone or not. But I do. I, I I will agree that I've seen a lot of this correspondence when it's done on email, and I obviously haven't heard the the, the, the phone conversations. But I do feel all the networks would be should have. Um, a department that deals with this, one or two people who have the necessary communication skills and empathy to deal with the family of someone who's passed away in in the appropriate manner and not to leave this terrible bad taste. Mm. Yes, there's business, but also you need to 
you need to respond um, in a human way and well, understand how those connections work. Yeah. Yes. So there are ways of doing it. You know, that's all saying it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah. I think that in in many cases could be dramatically improved. Upon. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I hear your point. And, and Talia, thanks for, for your message for raising this because some people might be surprised to hear that explanation. Yeah. That Wendy, yeah, makes sense. If, if a phone, for example, is not fully paid off, they as a business should be entitled to receive the rest of the payment due for that instrument. But I, I think your point is a very good one in terms of the customer well-being and the feeling of wanting to maintain the relationship um, happily. There yeah. are cases to be made where and surely you could let it go. And in yeah. her case, the, her dad had been a member, I think she said, for quite a, lot, many, a while. Years, and yeah. just to take that into account and build it into your business model would go such a long way. At the way. very least, some sensitivity training yeah, for your staff for and sure. how you deal with it. Thank you. Wendy, thanks. Very thought-provoking show today. And always great to have you with us uh, in the studio today. Um, we'll be back again with Wendy next week, Wednesday. And just a reminder that if you want to raise a consumer topic, you can send an email to Wendy on consumer at nola.co.za, spelled K-N-O-W-L-E-R. Otherwise, contact her via her Facebook page, which is Wendy Nola Consumer. Chat again next week. Will do, thanks.